In this lab, we'll talk about statistics, but first I want to tell you about why we even care in the first place. So here it is. The reason we need statistics is because the real world is more complicated than your homework problems, right? On a homework problem, you might have something that says, you know, a thousand newtons on some beam, or this thing is 30 degrees Celsius over here. But you've never really asked yourself, is it exactly a thousand newtons? Is it possible that that thousand newtons could be wrong, or that 30 degrees Celsius could be wrong? So those are the types of questions we're going to ask in this lab. So I put together a quick little demonstration to help show you how some of this works. What I did is I took an accelerometer to measure accelerations, which we'll use in this lab, and I mounted it to this RC car. So this accelerometer is going to help me find accelerations in the lateral direction and in the longitudinal direction, front and back on this RC car. And the way that I did this experiment is I took an Arduino Uno, and you're going to want to get this thing, it's awesome. It costs $25, you can have all kinds of fun with it. And I used that to measure the voltages coming from this accelerometer, and then I converted those to accelerations and stored them on that Arduino Uno so that I could look at them later on on my computer. I also put a camera back here so that we'll be able to see what was going on in the real world while I took this data, and I'll show you that video. If you get motion sick, you might want to look away from the monitor for the next 10 or 15 seconds. Now we can take a closer look at a slow motion version of the video over here, and on the right you'll see the data that I recorded, and this red bar will slide along to show you where in the data set we are in the video. Here we go, start out at zero g's of acceleration while we're not moving, and then a big spike in longitudinal acceleration when I take off. Coming in the first turn, you'll see we get a big spike in lateral acceleration as the car corners. And I want to take this opportunity to talk a little bit more about data collection. What I did here was 30 times a second I measured each of these accelerations in the lateral and longitudinal direction. And that's what you see plotted here, is just those measurements. Again, 30 times a second taking one measurement and combining them into a data set. Let's take a closer look at what's going on here. So again, if we look at the longitudinal acceleration here, you can see where I first start accelerating forward with the car. And if you know about DC motors, you should ask yourself whether it makes sense that as I speed up, the acceleration more or less goes down linearly. And in this lab, we'll talk about fitting lines to data. So maybe you could fit a line to that and think about what sorts of information that would help you find. But look at this. If this should be theoretically a line, we've got all these extra points around it here, right? And the same thing with the lateral acceleration. As I'm coming into this turn, we get all these extra points around where we think maybe the real lateral acceleration curve would lie. And so what are these points here? Are these real data? Would it be fair to say that the lateral acceleration of this car is 2 g's? If you know about real cars, that would be extremely high to have 2 g's of lateral acceleration. So I think that's actually not true. I think these points are somewhat erroneous measurements. And they could come from a number of places. It could be that there's vibrations caused by the road, or there could be imbalances in the wheels that are producing these accelerations, or it could be that these are erroneous electrical signals that we'll talk about later on, which we call noise. But I don't think it's fair to say that this car accelerated laterally at 2 g's. I think the real number is somewhat less. But this should all sound very informal to you, right? I mean, we're talking about, you know, maybe there's a curve through here. I kind of feel that these points aren't good. But this is where statistics is going to come in, is how can we say with more confidence that, yes, this car accelerated with, you know, maybe one and a half g's through the corner. So to help me try to figure out what's going on with this car and try to get to the bottom of what's actual dynamic acceleration on the car and what might be vibrations or electrical noise that we don't care about, I set my RC car up on a box here and I turn the motor on and off and measure the accelerations the same way I did before. And here are the new data that I recorded. Now again, this car isn't actually accelerating anywhere. It's sitting on a box, so it's not moving forward or backward any substantial amount. But we see here as I turn on the motor, we start getting a spread of points that looks kind of like what we had before, right? And as a matter of fact, we can get some points that are pretty far out there. I mean, these are at almost minus 1G, and that's just with the car sitting on a box, right? Not moving at all, maybe vibrating in place. But this starts to give me some idea how I might look at that data differently and try to get my head around which of those accelerations are real dynamic accelerations and which ones we don't care about. I haven't really told you yet how to use statistics to get to the bottom of what's going on with this RC car, but hopefully if you think about it during the lab, you'll start to realize how you could use some of what we're doing to solve this problem. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.